Hi. So welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me. I wish I was there in person, but you know the state of the world is such that it is. I'm pleased to join you virtually. So let's kick things off uh, with fun icebreaker. Be warned, the progressively get harder. Ready? Uh -oh. I'm ready. OK, let's go. What's the first thing you, that comes to your mind when you think of Google? Um, helpful. It's a lot of different services that help me accomplish things that I need to do. Which of your product features are you most proud of? Products, I think uh, the early days of, of search, uh, when I was working on the sort of search, uh, serving infrastructure and crawling and indexing systems, I think that was uh, something that, you know, we didn't publish papers about it, but it was definitely uh, an interesting period of time because we were changing the system quite rapidly. How about your favorite paper? Favorite paper that I published or in general? Yeah. Paper that you published. I mean, I think the MapReduce paper is probably one of the ones that uh, I feel like has had significant impact because it sort of expresses a relatively simple API and then describes how you would have a system that can implement that uh, that actually enables really broad uses of that API to sort of analyze data. Uh, now, Google has a lot of innovative products. Which of them would do you like the most? I mean, I, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for search because it's just so generally useful. Well, I promise it's going to get harder. So next time you come to Israel, where's the first place you want to go to be, visit or revisit? Last time in Israel was the first time I'd ever been there. And it was like a really amazing few days. I wish it was longer. Um, I would say uh, I really enjoyed kind of running on the beach front area in Tel Aviv. I would, I would just, you know, I just liked the vibe of of beach oriented cities. I was born in Hawaii and the, the beach in Tel Aviv is nice. And so I would just go and run up and down. Yeah. Running on the beach is one of my favorites. Well, last one. Uh, what's your favorite thing to eat in Israel? Ah, they, they do get harder because there's so many good things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm vegetarian, so I'm, there's lots and lots of great vegetarian uh, choices in Israeli cuisine. I, I really like just simple hummus and pita, falafel, tabbouleh salad, uh, and a bit of baklava, maybe. Well, I'm sure that if you ask uh, Israelis what's the best hummus, you're going to get into a very heated debate. Ah, uh, yes. All right. So um, let's get to more serious questions. Well, if you, if you could recount one cherished Google moment, one that really made you proud working at a company, what would it be? Hmm. I'm going to pivot the question a little and just highlight a few things that I haven't really worked on that directly, but that make me proud. Uh, you know, I think we do really well when we pick really ambitious problems and start working on them. Um, so, you know, I wasn't directly involved, but I was really proud when we started scanning all the books in the world in, you know, the various, it was just like such a crazy audacious thing to even contemplate. And we decided it would be a really good thing. And, you know, obviously for all kinds of reasons, it hasn't had as much impact as I think it could, but I think that kind of ambition is really well served in kind of thinking about what kinds of things should we tackle in the future. And I'll also highlight kind of our work on autonomous vehicles, right? Like we started working on that quite early, um, almost to the point where before a lot of computer vision and machine learning uh, techniques really were working. And so in, in some sense, we almost started too early because if you had the benefit of hindsight of what techniques were going to be available uh, now you might have designed some of the things differently, but I think that kind of ambition uh, is is really good. Yeah, it's actually one of those examples that is often useful to be reminded of how this really looked like science fiction at the time, and everybody were quite skeptic that this is ever going to be useful, and now it's kind of assumed that it's a, just a question of time, and actually it's already in reality in many cases. So this yeah. is pretty awesome. All right, so. One thing would be great to hear from you. One of the biggest uh, research hubs in, uh, that, that we have is, is in Israel, and obviously we're very proud of it. Uh, can you share uh, with our Israeli audience a few contributions that are you know, uh, coming from the Israeli side uh, and products, technical challenges that the Israeli team working on that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, one of the really great things about the Israeli research team is they don't do 
do one thing, they do many different things, and they uh, do do so many things that impact our products, but also uh, kind of push forward basic research. So I'll just highlight a few. There's obviously many more things that I'm leaving out, but I think um, the, the research team in Israel has a really strong focus on how do we get conversational AI working, and also how do we get uh, AI on device, uh, so on phones uh, and things like that, really working well. And this has been highlighted in a number of different kind of product uh, sort of features, things like you know call screening, uh, live caption, uh, live relay, uh, hold for me. These are features that operate on the phone and really help people in their day to day life. So I think this is kind of a hallmark of, of really great uh, sort of basic research into things like the speech recognition system and the, the dialogue systems, but then have a real impact on you know millions, hundreds of millions of people. Um, there's also a significant focus on kind of how can we use machine and other computational methods to improve uh, our approach to disasters and climate change. So I think there's really good work on flood forecasting that has been going on for many years and has been steadily improving and impacting more and more people around the world. Uh, and then there's one that I'm really excited about on how can we use um, sort of machine learning and analysis of data to improve uh, climate emissions uh, by making traffic more optimally uh, set up to reduce traffic emissions. So I think that that's kind of something there. Uh, that I, I'm pretty excited about. It's still pretty early in that project. Uh, and then in health, I think there's been a lot of good work in our health organization uh, from the Israeli team to really contribute to, you know, how can we build systems that take smarter notes for doctors or help doctors produce sort of medical record notes, uh, doing OCR of medical data to help doctors better understand and essentially organizing the world's medical information for clinicians. Well, that's, yeah. Obviously, we're all very excited about those, but it's great to hear, of course, uh, uh, about it from you. Talk about AI. Um, there are, obviously, this is one of the most exciting development, and uh, we're in this uh, pretty amazing point in time, and I'm personally very excited about it, of course. But it's obviously impacting everything that we're doing in our lives. Uh, there are so many problems that people think uh, AI can unlock and solve. Can you touch one, maybe a couple, that you are excited about, things that uh, things that you expect to see big changes in the next five years? Uh, there's a couple of things. So one is we are kind of just at the early stages of really building conversational systems that can have much more open-ended kinds of conversations. The kinds of product features that I mentioned do a great job in somewhat restricted domains. Like if you need to make a restaurant reservation, we can have a dialogue system that can help make that kind of restaurant reservation. Uh, but I think we'll be able to, in the next you know, few years, have systems that can have much more open-ended conversations. Um, so you might be able to have a conversational agent conversation with an agent where it can talk to you about literally anything. Like, I want to watch a documentary with my daughter. She likes science and engineering, you know, what should I watch? And then have you know, a five or 10 or 15 turn conversation where you take it in the direction that you want. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thinking about buying a tent, but I don't know anything about them. What what should I think about in this? And um, so that opens up a lot of possibilities. The other thing is I think we're starting to see multimodal systems where the sort of machine learning system can take in input in a lot of different forms. You know, raw, uh, you know, digital text, uh, speech, uh, images, videos and can also produce output in a bunch of different forms. So rather than having separate models for all these different modalities, you can have one model that can kind of flexibly take in some of these things and produce others of these things. And that's going to be uh, really uh, important because you'll be able to kind of make these models do many different kinds of things that will improve you know, lots of uh, technology products. I think I'm really excited about the ability to use natural language as an input and to then use that to steer kind of visual outputs. So imagine you're in some art making program and instead of like fairly generic tools like line or rectangle, you just talk to it. You're like, I would like to paint a beach scene and it like creates a bunch of beach scenes. You're like, okay, let's start with that one. Now I want some giraffes on the beach and it'll paint some giraffes on the beach. 
and you kind of interactively work with a system that actually understands the modalities that you're working with and can help you creatively kind of create what it is you have in your mind more rapidly uh, than a set of tools like lines and rectangles that don't really understand anything you're, you're thinking about. Yeah, and uh, I'm actually quite amazed how much uh, leapfrog we have on some of these technologies just in the last year or two on some, uh, in, in some areas where we could actually take these, uh, these new advancements and actually make them in use in places that otherwise we had to work harder. And therefore, actually, we can go deeper and look into other solutions. So uh, really exciting to see these developments. Yeah. Last question. So uh, we talked a lot about research, but you were one of the first engineers at Google, and you touched on that a little bit. Uh, when you think about a successful Google engineer, what are the three things or so that you're looking for? That's a good question. I think. Uh, Willingness to dive into problems they don't they're not necessarily familiar with and figure out kind of what's needed in order to solve that problem uh, to work effectively with others um, to understand people's uh, strengths and how to kind of complement each other uh, and accomplish things um, together uh, and uh, ambition I think having ambition in what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and what the possibilities are that you see for whatever it is you're working on is a pretty important attribute. Jeff, it's been a pleasure and, uh, of course, a pleasure to, of course, partner and work with you and uh, everybody, of course, in research. And look, we're looking forward to see you in Israel uh, in person, perhaps also to play some music. Uh, you're a great uh, music fan and a musician. Actually, you are playing uh, the violin, right? Yes, so. yes. You, although not that often, I have to dip, blow off the dust when I get it out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's great to chat chat with all all of you, and uh, you know I'm I'm impressed with the vaccine rollout in Israel, and hopefully the world will get back to a more normal state uh, as more and more countries and people get vaccinated. But, um, We're all looking forward to it, and uh, yeah. and thank you for joining us today. This is uh, this is great. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye.